A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Oh, that you had hearkened to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand and your descendants like its grains. Their name would never be cut off or destroyed from before me. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to their playmates. We piped to you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. 
The Gospel of the Lord. So, just to recap what has come before this, we know that the Saint John the Baptist has sent his disciples to the Lord uh, to ask if he is the one who is to come. Then he has sent them back to Saint John the Baptist, and then he turns and he addresses the multitude that is gathered around him. And so we have what we, the gospel that we had yesterday. And the Lord continues with his critique. And his critique is now to do with the fact that both types of calls to goodness. So what St. Thomas Aquinas says is he says that people are co called to goodness by two ways, either by the example of someone's austerity, so someone who, who gives a great example of austerity and of separation from this world, and is calling them to something beyond. So that's the example of St. John the Baptist. Or the example, he says, of friendliness, so which is the example that Christ gives. And so he says both examples are given to the multitude in St. John the Baptist and in his own testimony and witness, and they reject both. They perceive where there is only good, they project evil works or evil intentions. And so they reject both of those types of testimonies both of those calls to the good. They accuse, as we see, uh, John the Baptist of having a demon and Christ of being a drunkard and a glutton. And so they project evil where there is no evil, where there is only goodness. And so they reject these two testimonies. And so the Lord is uh, offering this critique to them. He is rebuking them for this type of behavior. And so he compares them to children in a marketplace, sitting in a marketplace, singing songs and expecting everyone else to dance according to their tunes, right? To whatever it is that they desire. And so they are not open to reality, but they exist like children who are constantly playing games. And so another thing that one of the commentators notes is he says, it's interesting to note that in our human nature, it is natural for us to be attracted or to be drawn to representations and so he gives the example, he says, um, like paintings or art or sculpture, he says, when a representation is very close to the reality, we rejoice even more. So if you think of like the Michelangelo, or one, of, one of Michelangelo's paintings or statues, where we see this great artistic work, we rejoice at how close it is to the reality. And that's something strange about our nature, which is that we do rejoice in certain things that are representations, but even as children, to when children are playing games, very often their games that they play are representations of certain things in reality. And so that can be either like for young children who play like house or war or things like that that they play. These games that are a joy to them, but they are in a certain sense a representation of reality, but they are still not reality itself. And so what the Lord is doing here with these, uh, this generation and sometimes in scripture, this generation refers to the congregation of the good, and at other times it refers to the congregation of the wicked. And at this point, he is addressing the congregation of the wicked, this generation that is acting wickedly. And he compares them to being like children. And we would think, well, isn't that a good thing? Because doesn't the Lord say the kingdom of heaven is for the, child, the childlike? But we can be childlike in multiple ways. When the Lord is speaking of the kingdom of heaven, the childlikeness that is required there is one of innocence. Whereas what he is saying here is that the type of childlikeness that these people have is that they are not in reality and that they are also not acting according to reason and that they are pursuing their own pleasure instead of being called and responding to the call to the good life. And so they are like children sitting in the marketplace. So sitting in the midst of the world, immersing themselves in the midst of the busiest part of exterior culture, immersing themselves in all of the things of the world. And then what happens is we note that in our soul, the most powerful passions or the two passions in which uh, which, which all the other passions culminate are either joy or sorrow. And also what one of the commentators notes is he says that nothing moves the passions of the soul so much as music. 
And so what we see here is these children in the marketplace singing songs of joy and singing songs of sorrow and expecting that when they sing, everyone else needs to respond according to what they desire. And so they have become the center of reality. We can see that, unfortunately, in our own culture as well, where there's all of these kind of movements that keep rising up, where you know, everyone is told what they should be angry about. Everyone is told what they should be rejoicing in, and there's all this type of political correctness. And so what happens is, is that there is this attempt to try and make people feel what the multitude feels. And if you don't, well, then you are not fitting in with society. Whereas what we should feel, our emotions, our passions, should all be ordered according to reason and all be ordered according to the testimony and the witness of Christ himself and the witness of all the prophets, the scriptures. Our life should be centered on truth and not emotion. Our emotions should be there to support right reason, but should not be what govern our interior. And so what the Lord is rebuking them for is that this is what they are doing. They've immersed themselves in the satisfaction of their own passions, and then they want everyone else to follow their lead. They follow no one else. They follow simply their passions and their desires. And the Lord has come. He has sent his prophets to try and call them to the good life. He himself has now come to call them to the good life, and they are not responding to this call. And so the Lord rightly is rebuking them. And so for us, what we are to take from this uh, gospel account is that our life needs to be centered on truth and that the right ordering of our interior needs to be aligned with that truth, not with the simple pursuit of pleasures in this life, but it should be ordered to the pursuit of Christ himself. And the way in which we do that is we seek him through the scriptures, we seek him in his sacraments, and then we seek him in those whom we serve. Amen.